I, um, I'm John. Just before I start, I wanted to say that I've come here tonight, you know, partly just to meet you lovely people and support the Drupal community and everything else, but also partly because last time I went to one of these things, somebody said we should hear more from people with lower or intermediate skills solving more simple and straightforward problems. So I've come here as a representative of somebody who's relatively new to Drupal, who's not an expert, who's not a full-time Drupal pro. Um, what happened when I decided to make, see Ryan spoil it now, when I decided to make, are you ready? My first module. There you go. And it just happened to coincide with this thing about uh, data feeds, and you'll see why in a minute, because it's about weather. So just a little bit about me. Uh, I've been a web developer in various ways for quite a while. I, um, I'm learning Drupal. I've done configuration and installation and setup and all those kind of things. I used to work at the ABC with uh, Mac there and with uh, James on some Drupal stuff there, as well as uh, other very, very strange CMSs that we haven't got time to even think about. And I've been going to job interviews lately and I've been saying, yeah, I know this about Drupal, I've done this and done that, but I've never, you know, written my own module or anything. So I sat at home and I thought, oh, why don't I write my own module? So I won't have to say that anymore. So which module shall I write? Um, I have some experience with uh, XML and the weather through my previous work at the ABC. They had an entire uh, content management system based on XML and XSLT, which is a bit crazy. So I've got some experience, from, you know, I knew there were weather feeds out there. So it should be relatively simple. We're just making a block that says what the weather is today. Um, it involves some stuff that I know about, some stuff in Drupal that I didn't know about that I wanted to learn about. So XML and Cron I'm comfortable with, forms I was interested in. It would involve a, a, a simple schema. Uh, it would involve setting cookies via Drupal. And I know there are already weather modules, in case anybody's about to put up their hand and say, you do know there are like 27 <laughs> weather modules. No, I don't know. But I wanted to start with something I could handle, that I understood the basis of, and then I figure what I'll do is I'll go and see how everybody else has done it, and I may go, oh, you know, like that, or I may go, oh, okay, my way is just as good. So I figured that was a good learning experience. So where do I get the data? I was just going to go Australian weather. So I wanted to go non-commercial, which is in the spirit of Drupal and open source and, you know, having worked in the public service. So uh, I wanted to get Australian weather. I wanted to get detailed Australian weather. I wanted to get something that I thought was fairly reliable. And uh, logically, one goes to the Bureau of Meteorology. Yeah. <laughs> I spent a lot of time looking at the Bureau of Meteorology website, and let's face it, the Bureau of Meteorology, that's our money. We have paid them to produce the weather for Australia. There are all these little, I don't know, stations or, you know, rain gauges around Australia. That's my money. I've paid for it. There ought to be really nicely formatted, really accessible XML feeds there. So I found, well, I found this. Oh, there's interesting stuff coming in November 2008. Look out for that. Everything's about to change. That's still up there as of today. I found instructions on how to get in by Telnet. Wait, that took me back. Um, I, the, the, some, of their HD, some of their forecasts are, are only available on HTML. That's the forecast for Wednesday. Any guess which Wednesday? It's just Wednesday. <laughs> Seriously? And, and some of them are in this weird text format. I think this is coming out of some earlier system. And in order to parse that, you just have to really carefully write some line by line, some, you know, some regexes. You'd have to really get into the detail there. So I kind of eventually, I searched around, I asked people for advice, and eventually, oh, sorry, I forgot this, lots and lots of that. There are all these instructions saying, click here, click there, you take V because it's Victoria, and you add on the number of your first order, take away your birthday, and then you get there. So, 
finally, listed under Victorian weather, I found this nice little feed. I don't know who creates it, but it's got a fairly simple feed. I guess you can probably see there, if you look up the top, it's got the whole of Australia, which is empty, and then it's got broom, and it's got three days of broom, and it's got nicely formatted elements. No, this is the good stuff. This is the stuff. I've reached the sigh of relief when I've got here. This is nice. And it's got major cities. It's got, you know, Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide, Hobart. It's also got Wollongong, Newcastle, Broome, all of those uh, major regional cities. So uh, my first approach, I thought I'll just grab the XML and I'll turn it into a PHP object. And I'll do that with simple XML. And that produces this really, really complicated object. And I kind of looked at that and I thought, Oh, I don't know if I want to walk through that array and try to figure out what the keys and values are. So I used some other things. I used some XML-based tools in PHP. XML Reader to just go through the file node by node. DOM document, you grab a node, make a little DOM document out of it, and you use DOM XPath to get to the thing you want to get to by saying it is the thing where X equals broom. And that, for me, was better for me, having some prior knowledge of XML, then getting that very big, very fussy PHP object. So this is the core of my module. It's a little cron thingy that goes off. It grabs the weather XML. I, you don't see the butt where I get it, but the second line there, weather XML is a string containing the XML, and that's it. You just go through and you say walk through all the nodes, and then database update at the bottom. A uh, simple little table, I'll just show you that at the top I've got nodes 0 to 14 of, of 15, but at CHP my admin is telling me there are approximately 15, I can't be sure. <laughs> That's beautiful. And uh, so I, uh, the Drupal user comes in, they choose that they live in Sydney, we set a cookie to say that they're in Sydney there, if you look down the bottom. And I used the following resources. I looked at the example modules, which are very, very helpful. Everything you want is there. Cron is there. Forms are there. I used the module tutorial, which takes you all the way through, building a tu uh, module from scratch. I used cron debug, which is probably far more obscure, just to make sure that the cron thing was happening when I thought it was happening and to see how long it was taking. Just gives you extra detail. It doesn't just say, it happened. It says it happened, and it took 17 seconds, and um, and there, that's the result. You get a little block, and it says you're in Sydney, and the weather for today is, and there's a little link there that takes you to the form where you can say, I don't live in Sydney, I live in Perth, whatever, and so there's another block that has all of those cities, if you want to chuck that on a page somewhere. And just because I'm the guy that is not an expert on Drupal, rather than you asking me questions, I'm going to ask you some questions now because I was like, what? Ah, some of the time. Okay, um, why do module config links appear in the info file? They're not part of the dot module file. That just seems a little crazy to me. I, I accept it, but I have no idea why and I don't. I think the idea is that the module config links appear on the admin so modules page. When you're on the modules it page. It shows that little configure link next to sort of a help us to show that link. Yeah. But you, then you have to do a lot of work in the module to make it appear and have the beer form. And the, mm. I just, anyway, so... Yeah, you still have to declare it in your book. Why, why is there no date type in Drupal 7 schema? There's timestamps, but there isn't a date. You can't just chuck a date in there. I chucked it in, I've got this big red error message, I kind of, I saved it as a string. It's an ISO date, you can sort it as a string, same as you can sort it as a date, but that, that was... Ten <laughs> Yeah, sure, which database is not SQLite? SQLite doesn't have a native date. Sure. See? Okay. And um, I saved my cookie, and I thought it was called that, and I spent another 10 minutes scratching my head. It's not called that, although I called it that. It's prepended with Drupal underscore video underscore whatever you called it. And that, again, is five, 10 minutes of my life I'll never get back. But Apart from that, it all went fairly smoothly. I knew where the resources were. I downloaded the example modules. I installed a few things. I used the tutorial, which is very helpful. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I'm aware that I've run out of time. Just some things I would do if I had more time. Uh, put graphics, maybe nice little graphics to say that something is cloudy or sunny. 
Uh, there are three days of forecast there, so there's a little arrow there. I'm suggesting you can go tomorrow, day after. I would figure out the user's lo location automatically and say, I assume you're in Sydney. I would queue things with cron differently rather than running it off cron. I looked into that, but I didn't have time to finish that. And I really don't know what happens if the Bureau of Meteorology one day just wakes up and says, nah, we're not doing that anymore. So I would have to actively maintain. I would, if I was to release this module for real, I would have to somehow sit on top of that feed and make sure it was still there. So no, I won't. Um, thank you.